that you see the information to the report directly to me.
That would be my guess. Yeah, that's why I'd like to know. I think it'd probably be helpful to know before we talk about it. Um, there's page seven of eight here. This all of the medallions. It's you and I have had casual conversations that lead me to believe that although we have 3,530 medallions issued uh, by this agency, we do not have 3,530 cats on the street in Las Vegas. Right? And you'd express to me ballpark that you thought without this, you know, clearly being hard data, but you'd express to me that you thought that right now the existing cab companies are about able to field 64, 65% of their medallions. And I'm sure every company's got a different. And we had a hearing yesterday where one company essentially buys used cars from another company, so they just have access to more cars than some of the others. And I think we'll get into that in hearing. But that'd be interesting to know um, to have those numbers refined to the extent we can. I think that part of the situation you are in, especially the two major issues that seem to be one is the both keeping the potential right? Also, the shortage of units, I think you know, probably that exists in the supply chain. You also understand that certain companies may use certain types of cars. Those cars aren't in short supply. Most of the industry cannot buy the type of situation in terms of buying for them. So, is that? They, will, they have to become more creative in terms of finding out the making choices in terms of buying cars uh, that are not the type of thing you can use. Uh, those are some of, the, some of the challenges that they have. We also have a challenge relative to painting the vehicle because if the vehicle is not a particular color uh, palette for that particular company, then you have to clearly you know, you have the ability to. Uh, that exception is that you would ask that that client be paid in the form of uh, their other cars, which incurs an additional cost for them to put that client into operation. Uh, these are issues that the industry has talked to me about in terms of reasons why we have the problems that we have in this particular I do not know to the forecast as to when that is going to be better uh, because that's more of a national problem. To do their best to try to be able to control, try to get the debt as they can. But the sort of force is going to be under control. Sure, I understand. Well, I think that would be good for the board to know coming a couple of months what that number is. If your educated guess was close, wrong, or if it's gotten better, I, I do know. I had a family member. Attempted to buy a car in, in late June. I sat there with her and every car, well, they, they couldn't even guarantee a car by November. They just said, we're going to put you on a list, except for some very oddball type cars that most people don't want. I would assume not just appropriate for caps. I don't know that. But uh, I'd never seen that situation. Uh, and then I was told that uh, by the salesman that the cars that we saw on the lot were the employee's cars. And they have them park up front because that day it looks bad. Uh, so then we moved on to we we moved on to use.
try to get the yeah. I think somebody in the audience is trying to speak, but we, we can't hear it. Well, at this point, we'll, they can speak to us when we get to public comment. not sir thank you very much it's your agenda items we i have one. a number of months ago we had a presentation on i believe it was from on technology changes just when we had asked for them to get back to you where they were doing the process of cooperation. Once the board, at least twice at this particular point, September, the National Association of Never. The reason why I went to law school is because I don't find it. So I, I, I am seeking. I, I have to go home. This makes it more difficult. And also, the child care work that you were talking about that I've been coming to is the one for a second this before. Or a possible doing something like a interactive, interactive, or using for possibly doing twice a month like and I would tell the board that that was something that's not what you're doing. Have some applications for after you resolve some of the issues that you already have in front of you. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, that is that is something that is on the horizon. But I would like to learn a little bit more about how the apps work, how we would determine the tariffs, the rates and things of that nature. That is it a situation in which we would have the right to look under the hood in terms of saying exactly how you would do a dynamic rate in terms of how would you make a choice as to when something should go up when it shouldn't go up. I didn't have a problem with the issue. Like, for example, if you wanted to charge additional monies for a Raiders game going to Legion Stadium in terms of us sending a particular amount that that would be mm -hmm. or some amount of token or something of that nature or going to some type of special event. But beyond that, if an algorithm is setting the price because of time of day or something of that nature. I would kind of like to know, and I think that you would like to know how that's being done because I don't know if you want to abrogate your entire authority dealing with the rate making in terms of abrogate that to an app to make that choice and, and have that app say, trust me in terms of we're doing what's right for the public and what's right for the traveling public. That, that part concerns me somewhat because I think that for transparency's sake, we need to know how uh, how the public is being charged so that we can be transparent with them as to what the rate is and give them some surety as to knowing in general what the rate's going to be. And I think that's something that's particularly within your bailiwick to do. And that's something that I'm working with trying to feel it out and try to try to get my get my arms around that situation. So 
It's not dead. Still it's not, you know, it's not dead. Still moving. And two, I would, I, just from my perspective, I concur with you, uh, and I've told you this personally. I want to know what's under the hood. I want to know what's under the hood for a, a practical le legal reason. I think we will have to sync up some kind of a rate structure that matches that. And if we don't know what it is, because the statute says we have to set the rates. That's correct. So we can't just, I don't think we can abrogate it to a third party. That legislature's delegated it to us. I don't think they allow us to delegate it to the market. Uh, so I, I, so I'm glad to hear that that's still in place. Uh, anything else on future agenda items for regular board meetings? Great, that completes um, agenda item. Again, thank you for the new statistical. That brings us to agenda item five, which is um, second public comment session. This is on the agenda for the purpose of the public. would like to address the board on matters within our jurisdictions. We cannot take action on those items, but we certainly would like to hear from the public if they would like to bring something to our attention. Madam Secretary, do we have somebody who wants to address this? Uh Going once, twice, and three times. I'll close public comment. Um, that brings us to agenda item six, which is adjournment. A motion. So moved. Seconded. Any comments? We are adjourned. Thank you.